Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Just wanted to do a quick little mini review here on my Ready Heater propane heater. I'm not sure what model this is. It probably doesn't matter because this one is like 12 years old. I doubt you can actually buy this exact model anymore. And I don't think it really matters. Um, what I'm really reviewing here is more or less this type of heater and this type of heating idea. Um, this one happens to be a 30 to 55,000 BTU. Uh, what I would tell you in regard to heat output and stuff on these things is bigger is better. Get the biggest one you can afford. Um, also, I would probably stay with a quality manufacturer. I probably wouldn't go to like Harbor Freight or something for one of these things just for safety. Um, all that said, what has inspired me today to talk about this thing at all is today, uh, I need this thing to bail me out. It's about... 45 degrees in the shop. You can see I've got the door cracked open, so it's actually getting colder. Um, and I'm about to try and put a convertible top on my Jeep. Well, that's not going to go well with it being 40 degrees in the shop or whatever. So I'm going to have to heat the shop up to get this done, and without this thing I wouldn't have been able to. But why I'm taking a quick minute to talk to you guys about that, I mean, there's a million ways to heat your shop, right? Is that my dad had one of these back when I was still working out of his garage and I have now lived three different places with this thing and it's been my shop heat in all three of those places and I never had to do anything you know you just when it's time to move you just pick this thing up throw it in the truck and you're gone uh, it's not ideal you know you can get better heating solutions that you don't have to mess with it's really not ideal because like the uh, the hose and stuff these these things come with is so stiff that it'll, once it's running, it'll start trying to point itself in whatever direction it wants, so you kind of have to keep an eye on it. But uh, more than anything, just food for thought for you guys, that if you need some shop heat, these things are a great way to go, uh, just because they are so portable and they're so easy to deal with. You know, when I run out of propane, I'll just run up to the gas station, get another cylinder. I actually have two cylinders, one's on the grill. Um, and just trade them out, you know, 20 bucks in 20 minutes and I'm up and running again. So it's, it's not the perfect arrangement, but it's good. This particular one's been great. Um, it's not too particularly loud or anything like that, although it w I'm sure it will be on film. Um, I'm going to light it off. That's the reason I have the door open is for the first few minutes I run something like this. I make sure the area is pretty well ventilated because just like a car, this will come up to temperature and start burning cleaner. Uh, you really should have a window or a door cracked. Um, when you're running these, I just try and more or less pay attention to how I feel, my exposure. <laughs> I don't normally run it all that much. Normally, if it's above 30 in the shop, I'm fine. But today, we've got a unique uh, situation, so I've got to actually get it warm, warm in here. But anyway, with all that done, I'll show you guys how to light it up. It's really straightforward and how you have to set it up. Uh, plugging it into the bottle is really no big deal. If you have a gas grill, odds are good you use this outside thread all the time. That's just, I believe, right-hand thread. You screw it on. The, the regulator on this guy actually threads into the inside. There are threads in the female portion of this too, and this is the left-hand thread. So it's loosey-tighty, <laughs> or lefty-tighty, to put that together. That's all there is to that. And then you just plug it in to electricity. Which is, and it doesn't have a very large electrical, electrical requirement, which is another thing I like about these things, is if you're in a crappy rental garage like mine where you only have one tent and not all that much of it, it's no big deal because the only electricity these use is just to run this, I don't know, probably eight inch fan in the back of them. So not a big problem there. But the process here is you plug it in. There's an igniter. That button right there is an igniter. You hold that down for like the first 10 or 20 seconds of operation. So you plug it in, you push the igniter down, you open the bottle once the igniter is pushed down, it'll light, and then you just hold that button for 20 or 30 seconds to make sure it stays running, and then that's it. So I'm going to get all that set up, and I'm probably going to point it out the door and get it running. So I did all that, and it's running. I'm sure you can hear it. It sounds kind of like a little turbine when it lights up. And I can already feel it putting out a ton of heat. 
and I'll let it run that way, shoot out the door for a couple minutes, and then I'll turn it into the garage and close the door, maybe just leave the door like very slightly cracked. We'll have to see. I've got to bring the temperature up in here like 20 degrees, so I don't know what I'll be able to get away with and what I won't. But that's the whole idea of operation. As far as I know, they all work the same. There are kerosene and diesel ones. Those are just smellier. I don't prefer those. I like these guys. But if you're in the market for something to heat your shop and you want to be able to move it around with you easily, these are a great way to go. I really like mine. And just for fun, this is a completely uninsulated garage with a steel door. We'll see how long it takes to come up from what looks about like 39 on that dial to say 60 or 65. Might be a while, but just for fun. And just to hopefully help keep me from dying, I just released the garage door from the opener because the opener is not very good with like really fine adjustments. And just lifted the garage door up a little bit, stuffed a screwdriver in there so there's like a three quarter inch gap now all the way across the whole door. And of course you got one at the top too. Worth mentioning too, I've got this, uh, I don't know, 16 inch or so fan that just run at the front of the shop and the heater's all the way back there behind the Jeep just to circulate the air because I actually need the, the whole garage to be a, a certain temperature. So when we go check out the thermometer here in a little bit, that should somewhat accurately represent the temperature of the whole shop, not just up there because the thermometer's right behind the heater so it may be kind of cheating. I actually do have another thermometer up there. There's a little probe for it that goes to the a wireless indoor section that's actually kind of like right behind that sign on the bench. So I can look at that too in the house and we'll see how we do, how we did. Well, it's been about 20 minutes and that guy is saying about 65, looks like maybe 64. Let's see what the one in the house says because it's up further in the shop. We'll see if we are even or not. And the one in the house says it's 52 up further forward in the garage. Those two usually do argue with each other quite a lot. So I'll probably let the front one run up until it says about 75. And I'm going to guess between the, the fan and the extra heat or whatever you want to call it, it'll probably be 60, 65 out there for a while. That'll make the top uh, nice and pliable. So now it's been about 25 minutes and I'd say that's 72-ish. Check the one in the house. And the one in the house is 62. So it brings it up about a degree every minute for about 20 minutes, which has been my experience with this thing even when it's like dead cold outside. Uh, for a two-car garage anyway, and this one's uninsulated. Really, the insulation just, it's exactly like what you would think it would be. It means more about how long it stays this warm rather than how quickly it gets this warm. But anyway, about a, a minute per degree. Pulled it from 40 to 73 at the front of the shop, and then probably 65 at the front. And I've got that fan running, so it'll keep circulating that air. And you also have to remember the stuff in the shop is still 40 degrees. It didn't just pick up all this heat energy you know, like that. So I'll have to run this a few more times to achieve my goal for the day. But I think you guys understand, you know, the principle here. You, you know, I think this has been a, a good review of how these things perform. I really like this one. If it died tomorrow, I'd probably buy another Ready Heater brand one. I've never had a problem. But there are other good brands too. I would just stay away from the really dirt cheap stuff. So that's all I got to say about it. Thanks for stopping in, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll catch you on the next one. Truck door, the burning it. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.